<laughs> this is gonna be funny. Here we are again, back in Jason's shop, and um, he let me back in, which was kind of weird, but uh, I do begged. have... He begged a lot. Well, <laughs> yeah. I caved. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, today we're going to look at how we're going to put uh, control horns onto the stabilizer and the rudder. Yep, the stabilizer and rudder on our giant scale Extreme Flight Yak 54. It's going to be a 60cc plane. Now, this particular one, we're just doing the stabilizers on we're this gonna, Yes, we're going to do the okay. stabilizers on this right, one. So, so sorry, my bad. So that's, that, uh, it was my bad because I said the wrong thing. That is true, that is true. And normally professionals will start that up, but we're just going to go with it. We're going to go we're with it. Move oh, on. We're going with we're it. So, on. Um, I watched a video on YouTube the other day, uh, a couple guys talking about how to tighten down your covering. That's where we started. It was actually a pretty good video. Yeah. We kind of know what they're talking about. So we got everything nice and, and tightened down. Uh, one note I do want to add before we go any further, once you've got everything separated, with these pin style hinges, Robart style hinges, you don't want to be putting them on, taking them off because they do have these barbs. And every time you pull these hinges out, they take a little bit of the wood with them. So when you're doing going through this process, guys, try not to install and remove your hinges too many times otherwise you're gonna you're gonna have some issues so we'll go ahead and set the the stab parts aside for right now we'll put them right uh, here behind you hopefully they don't go falling down oh well, my, my butt will knock those down those probably are. anyways so now we've got our I'll our take, stabs here take a so drink from my cup. you take a drink from your cup just remind everybody who you are um, just gonna go in here that's right so i use a couple um a couple microfiber towels here on my bench to keep keep things protected so we don't scratch things. Those microfiber I towels. am. I, I buy them every time I go to the store. It's dirty. Anyways, so there's a voice in the air that I'm came sorry. out. I don't know what that out was. Out of nowhere, I don't know who it's that like was. It's like the dirty god spoke Anyways. or something. Anyways, so Stream Flight does a really good job. Um, the bags of hardware within the kit are all labeled really nicely, so we're going to be working with the stab That's bag nice. here. Um, all we need for this step is our G10 control horns. G10 is a type of fiberglass board that circuit boards are made out of. I so wouldn't have known that. I just said these are my control horns. Now you know, they're G10 control G10 horns. So, that sounds impressive. Doesn't it though? So first thing we want to do is we want to take the parts out. So we've got two of the actual horn for each side. G10. G10. Horn. And one base plate for each side. So first thing we need to do is we need to remove the covering. Uh, if your kit doesn't have the covering already removed for the slots, a uh, good way to do that is with a soldering iron. This is a really cheap soldering iron I picked up. I think you can get it for 15, 20 bucks on Amazon. And you just use the tip once it's heated up to remove that. I did just notice that that's coming a little bit loose. Yeah, I showed how to do that in my other plane. Is a long time really? Ago. That guy might have known a thing or two about a thing or two. He might have. But they should have kept that guy around. No, they should have. But, but anyway, there's no reason for that. We digress. We wouldn't be here if they had. That'd be true. That'd be true. And we wouldn't be having this much fun now, would we? Exactly. So, I, think, I think I would still be crying in his sleep and in the fetal position when he goes well, to sleep. He still cries in his sleep. He does. Well, that's an interesting fit what okay. they've got there. That's not how that's supposed to be. I'm going to flip that and see if it makes any difference. Yeah, as I say, but it looks like it's even. It is, yeah. yeah. it looks like it's even. So I'm going to say that. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it extends over that. Some extreme play might need to work on there. Let's just check our rudder ones here. Oh, they're exactly the same. Exactly the same. same yeah. fine. The same pieces. Well, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to trim that later down the road. That's fine. We I have a that's, way you know, to do that. And there's these guys put out this thing about the Dremel tool. They have this new sand attachment. Yeah, 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 might might, uh, might work well. Huh? Yeah, think, there you go. I think that'd be a perfect spot <laughs> for using that. That is an interesting fit there. That's, uh, yeah, that is funny how that sticks it's out. It's all lined up nicely, so. Uh, I don't know if we're catching that on the camera, but you can see it's overhanging a bit here, so we're going to have to get this installed, and then we're going to have to trim that back, which I don't like having to do, to tell you the truth, but... No, that's alright. Anyways, we so, we adapt. So, first thing we need to do is get the covering cut away from here, because we need something for our glue to adhere to. It'll adhere to the plastic covering, but of course plastic covering is just ironed on to the, to the wood, so that'll pull away. So we use a fine tip sharpie, and we just mark our line here. Which our fine tip sharp is not working all that great, but that's okay. We don't need too much. I mean, it's all I need something. Yep, just enough to, to visualize See? it. There we go. And then we'll pull this back off. We're going to talk about two different ways to cut this covering away now. So now, since I'm going to be trimming this away, we, we can come almost up to the edge. We want to leave a little bit of overlap to where the covering goes under the edge of this so it doesn't peel up later, doesn't get fuel soaked, anything like that. So, first way to do this would be the old fashioned way. Um, some people 
get a little heavy handed with exacto knives. I don't know anybody like that. Uh, if you find yourself being one of those people, a nice way to avoid that is to use the blade without the handle, just so you don't push too hard because you don't want to cut into the wood below here. Yeah, but. that makes. And even if you if you use more of an angle too, you don't cut into the wood exactly. as much. Exactly. So you want to go to about a sixteenth of an inch inside the lines you just drew. Push down until you feel it pop through the covering a little bit. Now those are your metric. That'd be one meter, one millimeter. One millimeter. There you go. Hey, he's a metric too. What do you know? That's a little more than that. Whatever. Close enough. Close enough for this channel. That's right. There we go. I'm just going to mark, cut them inside here. And if you use a nice sharp blade too, that's going to have a tendency to cut through the uh, material or the uh, covering much quicker. So a dollar blade is going to force you to actually press down harder. Exactly. And so these blades are pretty inexpensive to buy in the right place. So you just find a corner, peel it, peel it up here. And it comes off in three pieces. There you go. Now, we've got our covering cut away. That's st step one. Let's uh, go ahead and do the other way with our other hinge or our other control horn here. That's uh, a little easier and guarantees you won't cut through the wood as I drop my control horn. So we're gonna go through the same process. We're gonna put the horn in here. Pretty sure it's gonna be sticking out the front again like it was, which, yep. hey, whatever, it's all good. So there we go. We're gonna take our Sharpie. We're gonna mark it. Now the nice thing about Sharpie too is if before you go to glue it down, you just take some alcohol and clean it right off once you make your cut, so that way you don't have the blue line around it. Why are you taking my steps? Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I just this I is just, true. I just didn't know what else to do. I'm just sitting here going, <laughs> that's so cool. That's so and I thought, yeah, I'm no, gonna add something because hey, I do have a bit of knowledge. We're glad you we're glad you finally you know decided to give some knowledge here. Okay. Yes. Tighten that down a little bit, just make sure it's doesn't come off. So you want to be careful. I always use a hand on here. You just lay it on here about sixteenth inside again, and just drag it along. See another idea. I don't know if I'm taking a step away. Go ahead. But you can also use that uh, um, steel roller that you had with the cork because it raises up a little bit. You could yep. put that right against there, and you just yep. make a nice straight line if you're, if you're really anal about it, or if you're really shaky. Which yeah, if you're shaky. Which seems the older we get, the more we shake, right? Is that what you're calling it? Because I thought it was just. The hey, you know what? Why are you telling my secrets? All right. That, uh, that tip is on there kind of loose. It is. I tend to go a little bit more at all. Thanks for the heads up. Well, I know you can see that, but you know, I'm just, I just have nothing to do here, so I'm just making a conversation. Keep it up, keep it up. Improvising. I guess I can talk about you know how we have squirrels and rabbits in our backyard. Maybe we can talk about them. I don't know. Maybe you know, you know, we're giving away a drone. You can talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we're giving away a drone. Yeah, we're almost there. So those of you who like this stuff, uh, please do subscribe to our channel because uh, we will be giving a drone away pretty quick because we're at, what, 477? 477, yeah. 477. So at 500, we're going to give away a drone. Yep. And everybody who's subscribed uh, will get a chance at that. Yep. So please make sure you subscribe to the channel and that also helps out the channel quite a bit and so does using those little links down at the bottom uh, we get a little bit of money that goes towards the channel and investing cameras and gear and hiring people that know what they're doing behind the camera and airplanes and, and airplanes we got yeah. some expenses yeah so yeah, definitely so we appreciate all the help definitely so now we've got our covering cut away covering cuts away a little cleaner with an exacto blade than it does with the, the iron but they're both going to be under the control horn and, so less, and way less chance for that too exactly to so it doesn't, cutting through. doesn't really matter so next step as John mentioned. Sorry. It's okay. No, no that was problem. My fault. We're a team here. It's okay. Get a little bit of um, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl. I always have a bottle of this around. You'll see why later. And just kind of, you usually want to wipe towards the opening just because it can smear a little bit. But see, I didn't say that. that. So yeah. that, that's a tip right there that you just gave that yeah. I did not. So not. you'll find the longer that it sat on, the, the more stubborn it's going to be. So if you get a little bit stubborn, you can always move up to denatured alcohol. Well, so now you're getting, now you're which crazy both are now. both are fine on the covering. Not, neither one will make the covering uh, brittle or anything like that. I've heard conversations so about that. Denatured alcohol, that's what I use for shellac. Yeah. Comes off a lot better. Yes. Yeah, well, it's, it's way more aggressive. Mm -hmm. There you go. More of an ancient. There you go. So now we got it cleaned up. They're beautiful. So, next step is going to be um gluing these hinges in actually no sorry we got to prep for glue so i have a nice little easy touch sander here a little four or five inch which is nice we need to prep these surfaces because something a lot of people don't realize is anything that's molded or uh, has some sort of epoxy or anything on it is usually laid up with some sort of mold release yes mold release gets on these these hinges and is coated on the surface and will cause things like epoxy to not stick 
So, so you're just going to sand them? Yep, so I'm just going to sand them and then go over them with DNA trial. Oh. That's why I, st- I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> I waited. I waited. See, and I, I cut I you off. All right, all right. My so we, we sand the bottom side of the plate. Just a few passes just to rough it up a little bit. Same thing with the hinge. We, I just usually line it up with my finger here and run up and down five, five to ten times. Nothing major. Just need to rough it up. Give the glue something to hold on to. Right in there, yep. And I like to double check both sides here. Well, it's good to know that we sure. built the planes the same. You know, yeah, you know. That's, that's always good. Do it on both of them. We're going to do both sides. You, don't want, you want to hold your finger along here so you don't sand the part that's hanging out. Make it look dull if you're worried about that. It's on the bottom side of the stabilizer, so I wouldn't be too worried, but you never know. And then when you continue on, I will sand those two parts, these parts. There you go. Okay. So that cool. we can Next on. step, we go back to our isopropyl. I'm going to use Denature just because it's a little more aggressive and we'll re- remove the uh, mold release a little well, easier. Well, some mold release won't remove, which is nice. Iso- That's true. the is- isopropyl alcohol. That's true. It actually does take... That. A lot of times acetone. I use I use acetone. Yeah, that's, that's what I use because acetone, acetone removes all re- mold release stuff. But DNH is going to remove a majority of ninety percent. Yeah, exactly. There we go. So I think I think you're good with that. Fine. Plus, it's not as flammable, not as toxic. Exactly. Not as bad for you, for the body. Wipe more down. Which side was handed on this one? This side was handed. Yeah, that's. I had, I had you, did, you did. My bad. I was just double checking. So it's good. Not that I don't trust you. And you can always clean both sides too, doesn't it? That's true. There is that, but then we need to know which side to glue down. So anyway, so then my next step is I assemble this with the sanded side toward the glue surface, like so. Okay. Then what I like to do, and I'm going to have to grab a wrench for this. I like to take one of my ball links. And I do this to line things up, make sure they're going to be straight. See, on last video when I, when I said, yeah, so it was, you did it again to me. Stop. You did it again to me. So I, I'm, I'm really good. I'm just I'm assembling the control horn. Okay, you assemble the control horn. So are we going to put this between it? Yep, we are. Okay. So that we have the proper spacing, the top That's one you true. use? Yep, I use the top one. Get in that, there's a nut, and then bolt. There we go. Ah. And just basically just to have it on the other side all the way tight and correct. We'll, we'll tighten it down once they're glued in, right. which is easy enough. So same thing like you're doing there. Okay. All stuff you know we could have technically done before the video, but then you want to see the whole process. So. Yeah, we got we can always speed it up in between our talking. Mm-hmm. Probably a good idea. Like right now, it'd be <laughs> zzz, 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 zzz. Okay. like that. Now that's gonna be extra high pitch because you yeah. just yeah, because I did that, and oh, I was gonna exactly. that's gonna really annoy people. <laughs> Exactly. So, yeah. When you guys speed it up, you cut down the sound because, you know, ton reads irritating. <laughs> so this does two things. This line gives us uh, our equal spacing along the hinge here and, and also across. So you can make sure we're lined up all the way around. Yeah, so it gives a parallel all the way through. Exactly. So now epoxy is what we're going to use for these. Um, I use 120 minute epoxy. I also use an epoxy gun. This is something I changed two years ago that has changed my modeling life. No more mixing sticks and making sure it's 100% mixed. Make sure you have the right mix of epoxy to, you know, hardener to, to resin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we'll go ahead and pop the lid off here. I still, I still do that. I still mix by hand, but I'm, I'm old-fashioned. Not here, better is that. Uh, it has a self-mixing. Tip. So spins it around in there and mix yep, it all up for you. It all up for you. I so always, basically, this is a lazy man's way of doing well, what you're Yeah, I've been called worse by better. All right. Whoa. So I put a little bit in the bottom here. This is my sample, so I know I can check on it, make sure it's hardened, all that good stuff. And then we just put a little bit in each of the slots here. I try not to do too much because it will lose. That was the other nice thing about the epoxy gun. Well, epoxy is very heavy too, and it so is. you know you don't want it, you don't want a ton of it. Yeah. And we're and gonna have a nice tight joint here, so it doesn't take an awful lot. And it's a perfect gap filler too. I mean, that's that's the other good thing about epoxy. And that's why we use gaps. it. It fills in any gaps and uh, hardens all of the surfaces. And make sure we have a little bit in these holes. These holes are designed here to to give a little grip. So this is almost like putting nails through it. Exactly, because what what happens is the epoxy on both sides. When you slide through, there's epoxy on both sides, and then it goes through the hole. And it creates a bond all the way through. So exactly. it's and definitely something you want to be sure. A monolithic bond. Oh. Uh, big words today. There's a lot of big words. I don't know if I can it's keep up Thursday, with this channel. I'm feeling good. There's a lot of big words. So I put a little bit on here. If you get a little heavy with it, it will 
uh, squeeze out when you press down. We, we can use a little bit of denatured then to clean that clean up too. Up, yeah. So I just like to make sure we have a, a you know decent layer all the way around. And the other, thing about, the other cool thing about epoxy is that, well, so I don't know how to use this. I'll do, I'll do my best. Do your best. Uh, the other cool thing about epoxy is that, um, and I totally forgot because I'm so concentrated on this and worried about screwing this all up. Don't screw that up. Uh, I too late. There we go. We so, test, we test. as mentioned, we have a little bit of a squeeze out here. Is that technical term? Is that what a woodworker would call it? Squeeze out? Squeeze out. Squeeze out. There that's, what it, that's what they call it because it squeezes screens. out. Let's take a denatured alcohol, which picks up epoxy and See, look cleans up epoxy nicely. Yes. Yeah. And you know, that, that's the thing I was going to say is that the nice thing about epoxy is that it doesn't necessarily have to be clamped. Exactly. Because you know, it, so it doesn't expand and push things exactly. apart. So then what I'll, I'll do here, since we're going to have to clean this up eventually, we just run the paper towel under here so we don't have a glue shelf there basically that we're going to be fighting with and we're cleaning that edge up. There you go. Clean it up. I will get the right driver for this hopefully. Should be this one. And a pair of pliers here. Now what I like to do once this is all in and pushed all the way in is tighten this down. Because a lot of times what this will do is it will actually pull it together. And which will force the bottom part that's in the stabilizer apart a little bit. Which will kind of lock it into the slots. There we go. And now we know we're 100% square. I'll give it one good last push. And we're going to let that sit for a couple hours. So now so now if the, um, if the right uh, stab comes apart, I get blamed for that's true. That's true. Well, you wouldn't get blamed either way, but you know. Fair enough. Alright. Pop it up. Cool. Set it up. So now we'll leave this sit for the next few hours. Make sure it's all kosher and we'll move on to the next step. There you go. So that is putting in your control horns and the the stabilizer on the extreme flight yet and we hope this helped you guys out yeah so like i said please subscribe uh look for more of these how-to videos because we're going to be doing this entire plane and every time that we can get a chance we'll show you steps along the way to help improve hopefully your modeling and assembly and uh, show you what we do and you know most of the time you'll find that we we do pretty much the same hopefully well if not it, we get this will be a little better if not you get two ideas for the price of one that's right so stay tuned